Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Uh, I also want to uh, introduce Bill and Linda Neal from our Gideon group are uh, here with me today. You know, the uh, 119th Psalm is the longest chapter in the Bible. It has 176 verses. It's longer than Philippians or Colossians. In fact, it's longer than over half of the books in the New Testament in that one chapter. <clears throat> And that entire psalm is about one thing. It's in praise of God's Word. It's in praise of God's Word, and it talks about how it affects us. Every verse talks about its truth, its beauty, its promises, how it's trustworthy, it's a guide for behavior, it's a comfort, it's a delight, it's a source of hope. It says it is a lamp unto our feet, and a light unto our path. And it says it's sweeter than honey and more precious than fine gold. And best of all, verse 89 says, Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It's forever. It's always been and always will be. And every day there are millions of people around the world that are sometimes comforted and sometimes confronted by the Word of God through encountering a Bible in their uh, daily activity. And sometimes it makes the difference between life and death. A pastor once told me a story about his father, who had also been a pastor uh, in San Antonio. He received a phone call late one night from a long-haul truck driver who told him he had checked into a local motel with a gun. He decided to end his life. But he said when he got in the motel, he noticed a Gideon Bible on the nightstand. And he opened it up. He began reading. He had some questions, and he wondered if the pastor would uh, come and talk to him. And just kind of as a side note, I just want to remind all of us that we don't always appreciate all the things our pastors get called to do. They get called to, uh, to get involved when people are sick, to comfort the sick, to comfort the grieving when someone is, has passed. They get in the middle of family conflicts sometimes. Uh, uh, they take on a lot for us. So I just want to remind you, thank your pastor and pray with your pastor. Pray for your pastor. Well, this pastor got dressed and went to the motel. And I don't know exactly what happened in that room, but after a while, but I believe there were more than just two men in there talking because something happened to that truck driver after he read for the Bible. He began to have a change of heart because when the pastor finally walked out, he had the gun and the truck driver had a new best friend named Jesus. And it was made possible because an anonymous Gideon had placed a Bible in that hotel room, uh, which was probably paid for by church members, by the way. God promises us in Isaiah 55, 11, that the word that goes forth from his mouth will not return empty, but it will accomplish what he desires and achieve the purpose for which he sent it. That's been the, that's been the key verse for Gideon's for over 100 years. Well, there's actually more to the story. Years later, later, this pastor had moved to a different state, was serving a different church, and he got a call one night from the same man and who asked him if he was the pastor that had led him to Christ years before. And he said he just wanted to let him know that he was still living for the Lord. God's word does not return void or empty. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, after Moses had given God's law to the uh, Israelites during the, their exodus from Egypt, he told them, he said, These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. He wanted God's people to remember God's word. 
not only remember, but to think about it and talk about it and have it in front of them to remind them. They even wrote it on their doors and gates. In other words, they made it readily available as they went about their daily activity. So that's kind of like what Gideons are doing when we place Bibles in hotel rooms and uh, waiting offices and uh, wait, doctor's offices. Uh, public places, what we call the highways and byways of life, to make it readily available for people. The Apostle Paul wrote the church in Philippi 127. He said, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. This tells us that you and I, as believers saved by grace, should act like it. We should have a manner of life that is worthy of what Jesus has done for us. And we should stand firm in our faith. And we do that by relying on what the Bible teaches and by relying on the one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to guide us with one mind in unity. It also says it's not easy. We must strive. That we must work hard against the opposition of Satan uh, for, the, for the souls of those around us. As Gideons, we strive together side by side. This, is, this has been kind of one of our uh, current favorite verses, one, Philippians 1.27. Uh, we strive together side by side with our fellow Gideons, as Bill and I uh, uh, are here today to meet with this church. With our wives in the auxiliary, Linda is a middle member of the uh, auxiliary for Gideons. And we work side by side with churches like this one against our common enemy to tell people around us about Jesus. In addition to placing Bibles uh, in the highways and byways of life in public places, we also offer a personal vest pocket testament to uh, students, to uh, both uh, fifth graders typically and to college students, to military, to prisoners, first responders, uh, several other groups that we offer uh, God's Word in a very portable form. So let me tell you where some of these went in Williamson County this year. We're from the Williamson County group of Gideons. Uh, about a year ago, a new embassy suites, a large embassy suites hotel opened uh, just off of I-35, kind of behind the Round Rock Outlet Mall. And the week before opening, uh, we went over and stacked uh, 250 Bibles in the shape of a cross on a large table they had in the lobby uh, we met uh, the general manager and their staff uh, and the uh, housekeeping staff. They were there being trained that week. Um, we went and placed Bibles in every room and then uh, gave, gave testaments to all the staff. Uh, we don't have large colleges in our part of Williamson County, so we help out some of our neighboring Gideon groups. Uh, several went to College Station in October one day and helped distribute over 9,200 9, of these to uh, A&M students there. And then went to Texas State on October the 9th and handed God's Word to almost 6,000 students there. And we'll be going to UT uh, later this month, uh, toward the end of the month, to assist the Austin camp there. Our auxiliary, kind of one of their main things is visiting all the medical offices and placing a Bible, a Bible or two or three in the waiting rooms and then giving testaments to the staff uh, there. And uh, they, uh, they visited over 200 medical offices in our county last year. We also, uh, I don't know how many of you know about the T. Don Hutto Immigration Center in Taylor. Um, they, uh, they exist to process on a short-term basis uh, immigrants that have been detained. They're there for a short while while it's work, they work out what's really going to happen to them. And we've uh, provided them 2,600 Spanish testaments and a few other languages as well uh, in the last year. That's kind of, we get to do foreign missions as well because we can go there and give them Spanish testaments and most of them are going to take them back 
to when they're deported. And so we get to do a little foreign mission right in Taylor, Texas. We're also finding a lot of new opportunities in food banks and fall festivals, kind of since COVID, that that's still the effects of that in terms of uh, people being hungry uh, has lasted. Uh, last week, Bill and I went to the uh, ACC campus in Leander. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with the food bank. Uh, we went to a college and uh, handed out uh, over 200 testaments. And then the next day, he went to Taylor and I went to Granger, and we did visit food banks, drive through uh, food distribution centers, and uh, handed out testaments there. There's a lot of people in the county still that are hungry, and even more that are still hungry for God's Word. And a lot of them don't know it, but uh, if you can get it in front of them and let the Holy Spirit then work. Last December, during uh, Georgetown's uh, Christmas stroll event, first weekend in December, uh, we worked in uh, shifts in Bethlehem Village, uh, dressing up in first century uh, costumes and uh, distributed testaments there. We gave over 3,600 testaments to uh, people uh, departing as they came away from the nativity scene after, uh, you know, seeing the little play about Jesus being born and hearing the song, and then we give them a copy of God's Word. Actually, in 2022, we distributed uh, some 14,000 scriptures in Williamson County, in our part of Williamson County. But around the world, there are over a quarter million Gideons and Auxiliary uh, in 200 plus countries and territories around the world. Uh, and we provide this Word of God in 109 languages. Uh, we reached a milestone last year of 2.5 billion Bibles distributed since we started in 1899. And I apologize, I know that's a lot of numbers, your eyes kind of glaze over after a while. But, but, the nub of it is all that is done for one reason only, so that individuals, so that people may know about and come to know personally their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And a uh, saying I just saw recently, and I really like it, is that there's only one number that matters. Our number one priority is the next one that we're able, well, that we're able to reach. Uh, we we'll, we have a display uh, out at the back uh, as you go out that has a that has a basket uh, to give you the opportunity to join with us side by side striving together by donating to pay for Bibles uh, churches uh, uh, help buy the Bibles and then we provide hands and feet to hand them out all of the money goes to per purchase Bibles and Testaments we use only a part of it in Williamson County because we send, as the richest country in the world, we send uh, an even bigger part to countries around the world that have Gideons, and they have people that want to know, want to know about the Bible, but, uh, you know, the cost of this Bible may be more than a day's wage for them. So uh, that's part of what we do is send a good chunk of our, our money to buy Bibles for the Gideons in those countries. And kind of an example, uh, Ukraine, uh, been in the news a lot. You know, there are over 2,000 Gideons and Auxiliary in Ukraine, in some 200 camps around the country. And uh, after the war started and the, the uh, refugees started leaving, either move into another part of the country or to surrounding countries, uh, Gideon's uh, ramped up and provided hundreds of thousands of Bibles in the Ukrainian language to the countries around them for the people that were fleeing. And we got word about a man named Victor. Uh, he was 51 years old, a Gideon from, uh, from near Kiev or Kiev. And he was known around him as, to those around him as a man of prayer, as a, a man with a big heart and a heart to witness to everybody around him. When the war started, he told his family and friends that the Lord had called him to go to the war zone and share God's word with the soldiers. And he believed there was a specific soldier with, that the Lord wanted them to share the gospel with. Well, he was fully committed to carry out that call as the war wore on, and he wasn't able to get as close as he wanted. 
he joined the Ukrainian army at 51 years old and uh, so that he could take God's word right to the battlefront. Well, he got a leave, a military leave in late December or in early December last year to spend some time with his family. And uh, he uh, accepted an invitation from his pastor to share with their church what he, what he was doing in spreading God's word. He said the Lord was granting him opportunity to, uh, to reach many in that war zone. He told them about one specific soldier who gladly took the word of God into his heart and repented. And then he returned to his military unit in Bakhmut. You might have heard that word uh, a few months ago if you w watched the news. Returned to uh, continue his mission there to win the lost for Christ. But days later, uh, his mission on earth ended. And at his funeral on December 21st, uh, hundreds of people came to pay respects his pastor said he had gotten messages from a lot of members of his military unit who told him that victory had been a ray of light, and many shared how he had led them in a prayer of repentance. So just an example that God's word does not return void as we together stand side by side uh, for the faith of the gospel. Uh, you should have received a bulletin insert inside your the bulletin with an uh, insert from the Gideons with information about Gideons. It also has an envelope that's addressed to us. If you're not uh, prepared to uh, donate anything today, you can take this home and put something in it and uh, send it uh, send it to us later. Our, also, our display outside has a some photos from some of our distribution, a sampling of Bibles and Testaments in various languages. Uh, we also have some what we call app cards. It's just a little plastic card that shows you how to download a Gideon Bible to your phone. I know there's lots of different uh, Bible apps. Um, this one uh, has uh, some of the helps that our little Testaments do. Um, it also gives you access to over a thousand languages, which is sometimes helpful if you meet someone that uh, has a, a different uh, native language uh, to show them how they can access God's Word. Uh, we also have a display of, uh, of Gideon cards. You're free to take some of these. This is a card you can use to, this is a memorial card. For example, you can ask the Gideons to donate Bibles in, uh, in, in someone's memory, a deceased. And, uh, of course, you, you say how many Bibles, and there are $5 a Bible that you enclose in an envelope uh, uh, to buy, pay for those. Uh, there's something I meant to say. Oh, well. It just... Senior moment, right? So Jeremiah twenty nine eleven uh, is a familiar passage. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And I believe that God does have a plan for each of our lives. And also, we sometimes play a role in even bigger plans that he has. And we don't even realize that, at least until it's over. Uh, so I want to give you an example about an amazing plan God had, and both about individuals in it and about the, the broader scope. Vernon Spencer was born in 1908 in Missouri. He was one of ten children. Uh, the family uh, moved around some looking for work, and they finally ended up in Pitcher, Oklahoma, up in the north east corner of Oklahoma. Uh, Vernon liked music, and uh, he had bought a ukulele when he was 13, which really made his father angry because this was kind of during the Depression and times were hard and the family needed every penny for food, not for foolishness. Um, his dad and his bro older brothers worked in the lead and zinc mines in Pitcher. That's what it was founded. That was the purpose for Pitcher, Oklahoma. And when he got old enough, Vernon did too, of course. But he hurt his back working in the mines. He wasn't able to do that anymore. 
but he had learned quite a bit of music. So he began playing at the Bucket of Blood Bar and Dance Hall in Pitcher, Oklahoma. And he liked playing music a lot better than mining lead. So in 1931, 23 years old, he caught a train to Hollywood, planning to make it big like a lot do. Uh, he had begun writing songs, and when he got to Hollywood, he'd work in the Safeway store by day and then make the rounds of the music clubs and venues at night uh, looking for a way to get into the business. He met a couple of other young men who also considered themselves musicians, and so they formed a little band they called the Pioneer Trio. Their names were Leonard Sly and Bob Nolan. Vernon had kind of picked up a nickname of Tim, so he began going by that. And Leonard decided his name didn't fit the music business, so he changed it to Roy Rogers. They eventually added a fourth musician, so they couldn't be the Pioneer Trio anymore. And someone had observed when they were playing that they sure didn't, they looked way too young to be Pioneers. So they changed their name to the Sons of the Pioneers, which, as many of you know, became one of the most popular country and music uh, groups ever back in the day. And many of their songs were written by Tim Spencer. And things really took off, uh, 30s, 40s. Uh, Tim was writing music and uh, money was pouring in. He wrote uh, Room Full of Roses, uh, and that was the number one pop hit in 1949, played by the Sons of the Pioneers. And then Mickey Gilley in 1974 recorded it, and it became number one in country music, and that's the one I remember. Tim had married by this time, his wife Velma. They had a son and a daughter. But, you know, the band was on the road most of the time, and back then it was the road. It wasn't jets and all that kind of didn't have big buses either. Uh, they were on the road for weeks at a time. And during that time, Tim wrote another hit song, well, another song called Cigarettes, Whiskey, and Wild Wild Women. Unfortunately, he had become an expert in the subjects of that song as he had traveled. Velma was concerned. She prayed for him as he traveled. When he was home, uh, she wanted him to go to church with her, but he wanted to rest, and he didn't like her nagging him about it. So she talked to her pastor at the Hollywood Presbyterian Church about it, and her pastor suggested that she not complain about his traveling or nag him about going to church, but just write him regularly and enclose a Bible verse in each letter. So she did, regularly and faithfully. She wrote letters to Tim. She would send them ahead because they had a schedule uh, to the hotels on the schedule. So often when they arrived in a town, there would be a letter waiting for him from Velma. So they checked into a motel in Pennsylvania in 1949, and Velma, uh, Tim had a letter waiting from Velma, and in his room he opened the letter, and this time the verse of Scripture really grabbed his attention. I wish I knew what the verse was, but the story did not reveal that. So, but this verse really caught his attention. And of course, there was a Gideon Bible on the nightstand, and he picked it up and looked up that verse, and so he read a few verses ahead of it and a few verses after, you know, how you do, read in context. And then he kept reading. So we've already seen it, but Hebrews 4.12 says that the Word of God is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing or penetrating to the division of soul and marrow, and, and discerning the thoughts and spirits and intentions of the heart. Well, that's what happened to Tim Spencer that night. And by the way, that's what happened to the truck driver with the gun. And that's what happened to the Ukrainian soldiers with whom Victor shared God's word. And the next verse, verse 13, reads, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Well, Tim might have felt that, you know, what he did on the road stayed on the road, uh, that it was hidden from Velma and his children and people he knew back home. But that night, 
Tim Spencer accepted Christ. He became a new creation, and his whole life changed. He stopped traveling on the road. He spent more time with Velma and the kids. And he eventually left the Sons of the Pioneers, and he went into the music publishing business and founded a new company called Mana Music. And if you look on, you know, song sheets and song books, a lot of times down at the bottom, you'll see it's published by, Man of Music has the publishing rights. In 1953, his son, Hal, uh, a young man, went to a youth missions conference, and he heard a Swedish medley there, which really caught his attention, stirred his heart, and he asked for a copy to take to his dad to look at. Well, Tim contacted the songwriter, and they tweaked it a little bit, made a few adjustments, and actually had it recorded by a few groups uh, with limited results. Then in 1957, Tim asked another man to record it. Now in 1957, Billy Graham did a monumental crusade in Manhattan. It lasted 16 weeks, over two million attended, and they say 56,000 made decisions for Christ. George Beverly Shea, who Tim had asked to record that song, How Great Thou Art, sang it every night during that crusade and thousands of times in years to come because it became the theme song of the Billy Graham Crusades. God has a plan for our lives, and it's not always quick, at least the way we count time. It's not always simple by our simple minds, but he used a pastor in Hollywood to give a worried wife some good counsel about how to deal with her husband, how to encourage her husband. He used this faithful wife to just include a Bible verse in uh, every letter she wrote him. And he used some anonymous Gideons to place Bibles in hotels along the way. And then the stage was set. That verse, uh, prompted by the Holy Spirit, caused Tim Spencer to pick up the Bible and the double-edged sword, the living Word of God, pierced the heart of the man that had written cigarettes, whiskey, and wild, wild women. But you know, that's not all. God used that man then to publish and print for worldwide distribution what many consider one of the greatest Christian songs of all time, How Great Thou Art. So one Bible, one man, one song made a difference in the lives of millions of people worldwide. But that's still not all. He also had told his grandson, Stephen Spencer, about Jesus when he was young, and Stephen, when he grew up, became a missionary in Malawi for 30 years and became Dr. Stephen Spencer, teaching at the African Bible College in Malawi. So how great is our God, how great indeed, and his plans for his people who he loves. Uh, God's word does not return void, and it will accomplish what he desires. He just wants us to share it with others and then give God all the glory. And be joyful in the Word of God. Uh, I'm going to end in a moment with a joyful video taken following a Bible distribution at a school in Kenya following a Bible blitz. Now, the Gideons do these blitzes every once in a while in, in countries or in major cities where Gideons come in from all over and help the local Gideons in papering, the, papering the, the city or the country with God's Word. And so that had, there had been a Bible blitz there, and uh, some of them went to a, a school and handed out a few Bibles. And in fact, you'll see, the, at the time, the international president of Gideon's was there with them. But I need to teach you the words first. It's kind of hard to hear. I had to listen several times. So the words to this little song they're saying, the kids are singing, read your Bible, read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day, read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. Let's watch it. <laughs> 